Welcome to our study through the book of Psalms. We are already to Psalm 100. We are do, doing these in numerical order. And so this marks the two thirds uh, point uh, and mark of the entire book of Psalms. Today, this Psalm is entitled Old 100. Uh, that's what it always was called in the old hymn books. They happen to make this but this is uh, on page 100 also. And uh, we sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Um, this all ties into this, and that song is written out of this psalm. And so we have the, the joy and the blessing and uh, just the privilege to teach this one today and just open up some doors that uh, might encourage us and uh, might teach us something today too. So this is the outline of the entire book. And an introduction to this, other than what I've given you, the biblical one is, uh, the psalm definitely sounds familiar to you, and uh, this is where the words to the doxology comes from in our hymnals. Uh, in days gone by, it was referred to just Old 100, it is about gladness and thanksgiving. They, these two words just theme and drive this psalm. And even though it's a short psalm, we'll read an awful lot about those things. And they all come from the Lord. And we do not know who wrote this psalm. Nothing is mentioned in the prescript. Um, it, is, it is the only psalm out of all 150 with the precise inscription on it, a psalm of praise. And that's, not, that's, that's all that's said. There are no musical instructions and no dedication, except it's a psalm of praise in which we look to the Lord. It is prophetic and talks about all ye lands, not just to Israel. Israel is looking for better days and a future. And it chronologically fits in at 1 Kings 8.66. It is a great day, the backstory in Israel and in Jerusalem. The temple has been completed. Solomon is on the throne and he is leading his people in rejoicing in praise to the Lord. And it is all about this great day and just God is great. So this is a very detailed outline of five verses, but you're going to see I combine a little bit. And uh, in fact, I'll show you on the first slide. We certainly have the, the outline, but I have combined the points underneath as shouts of joy, singing of joy, and service of joy, because it just makes sense as I read through these couple verses that there's just shouting and praising to God, singing, and just service of joy. Joy just drives these couple verses. And so let's read the scripture. Make a joyful, there's joy again, noise. Uh, the word noise in the Hebrew means to shout out or to raise a great sound unto the Lord, all ye lands. And the word Lord here is translated uh, Jehovah from the Hebrew, and it means the existing one. Um, there has not been a time we haven't read through one of the Psalms that uh, when the Lord comes up, uh, it is Jehovah, and he is the existing one. He's eternal. And so we're told to make a joyful noise, everybody. Then it says, serve the Lord with gladness, work or serve for the Lord. Once again, Lord is Jehovah with gladness or joy. So here's joy uh, once again popping up here. Come before or come on in. It's just an open invitation. Just come on in before his presence or the face of the Lord with a ringing cry of singing, with singing that rings. So that uh, these two verses just ought to stir us that, that we make a joyful noise the Lord and we serve the Lord with joy 
and we, the psalmist says, come on into his presence, into the face of the Lord, with, with the with ringing cry, we're just singing that resonates. And so with that in mind, we move to the second one. There's a perception of thanksgiving in verse 3. And it talks about who's in charge, authority and authorship of our lives and assurance that he gives us. So this verse says no. And it in the Hebrew, it is a point knowledge event. But it has the connotation with the but we continue to learn. And so it says, know you that the Lord, he is God. So there's a point that we come in and we counter and we get and we know the Lord. We we are introduced to him, we receive him. But from that point on, there is continual learning about him. And as a Christian, that's how the Christian life operates. We know the Lord now we want to learn about him. And it is he that has made us. And the word made here means accomplishment. That we are God's apex. We are his greatest accomplishment. He has made man. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And so because God made us, not us, it's not all about us. We just didn't evolve from somewhere. We were created. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture, and God will take care of his sheep. Then we come to our third thing, and there's a progression of thanksgiving. There's public, there's personal, and then there is the word privileged praise. And it's not privileged because we're white or we're we're an American, or we have more money, it's a privilege that we are a child of God. And everyone can be privileged by receiving Jesus Christ as personal Savior. It is an honor and a privilege to be a Christian and to serve the Lord. So let's look at some more praise. Enter uh, into his gates. Come, come with, with, with holiness. Come with a a heart that realizes we're walking into the presence of God, but come with thanksgiving, come with praise, and into his courts with praise, and be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Uh, this verse may have been used during the sacrifices. The singer or the cantor would sing the first half of the first half, and then people would respond with the second half. And so what would happen, the, ca the cantor would sing, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And then the people would say, and into his courts with praise. Then he would sing, be thankful unto him. And the people would respond and bless his name. So everybody gets involved. And then we end this psalm with the person of thanksgiving. Who's this all about? Just in verse 5. And it talks about everyday goodness and everlasting mercy and enduring truthfulness. For the Lord is good. His mercy or his kindness is everlasting. And his truth or steadfastness endures to all generations. And so we close with, God, you are good. You are merciful. You are truthfulness. And we thank you for who you are, and you've blessed us so much. So songs from this psalm that we sing today uh, is definitely the doxology. And then do you remember, enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts? It's another song that is out there. It's, more, it's very more recent than the doxology. And then we picked up other phrases that you perhaps say, hey, I've heard that phrase before in this chorus or this song. But as we close, here's the lyrics to Old 100, to the doxology. And it's a great summary of the psalm. And I would encourage you to find the music 
and just play it through and maybe sing along with the people. But here, here's the doxology, and just think of the words. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God, the Father, who's the source. Praise God, the Son, who is the course. Praise God, the Spirit, who's the flow. Praise God, our portion here below. We thank you so much, Father, for this great psalm and who you are. Today, may in our hearts we be reminded to praise you for all blessings that flow our direction, not just in Christ and the Spirit and you, the Father, but in direction and leading and a life that you've carved out for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you at the next psalm.